Hi everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk about different metabolizable energy in poultry nutrition. So let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you. There we go. Okay. Altogether, when we are talking about metabolizable energy in poultry nutrition, we do have four different types of ME or metabolizable energy. First is AME or apparent metabolizable energy. We do have TME or true metabolizable energy. AMEN, apparent metabolizable energy corrected for nitrogen or we can say corrected for zero retention of nitrogen. I will talk about this later on. And TMEN or true metabolizable energy corrected for nitrogen. Before diving into these concepts, let's talk about energy partitioning in animal nutrition. Actually, if you put you know, a feed sample or feces sample in the calorimetric pump, it will measure the gross energy or let's say total energy of that sample. But in fact, gross energy is not gonna be consumed, is not gonna be utilized completely by the animal. And it will have some losses. The first loss is through the fecal energy. It means that animal will eat that amount of gross energy from the feed and will excrete some part through feces, which is not available for the animal. So the remaining energy is digestible energy or DE. From that amount of energy, the animal is going to excrete some energy through uh, urine and through gas. Especially, you know, in ruminants, they are producing uh, lots of ruminal gases and they can excrete some energy from there. So the remained energy, we call it metabolizable energy or ME. And from this amount of energy, again, it's gonna uh, be excluded some part as heat increment or HI. And the remaining energy would be net energy or NE. So when we are talking actually about heat increment, in poultry or in in general aspects, in monogastric animals, and also in ruminants, uh, we do have heat increment from metabolization of nutrients. For example, carbohydrate, protein, and fat. And the heat increment from protein is higher than other nutrients. And for the fat, the heat increment part is less than other nutrients. But if we are going to talk about specifically about ruminants, I would say the most important part of the heat increment is fermentation heat increment, which is produced in the rumen through fermentation, microbial fermentation. So when we are talking about ruminants, because they are going to, you know, uh, lose lots of heat increment energy through the ruminal fermentation, that's why usually we are using net energy in ruminant diet formulation. But for the poultry, uh, because heat increment is uh, very low, that's why we can use 
metabolizable energy. But there are some, uh, you know, debate that you can use net energy in poultry as well. Anyways, so coming back to our main subject, four types of metabolizable energy in poultry diet, poultry nutrition, as I said, AME, TME, AMEN, and TMEN. And today I'm going to show the formula for each uh, energy criteria or energy measurement. And then I will explain why we are calling them apparent, why true, why corrected for nitrogen. So the first measurement is called AME or apparent metabolizable energy. This is a simple idea. In fact, it is defined as the gross energy of feed minus the energy in feces. You can see the formula here. So AME equals feed intake or FI times gross energy of a feed, which we call it JEF or gross energy of feed. So this part actually shows us, okay, what the animal has been eating or has consumed minus the part that animal has been excreting. So E means excreta because we are talking about poultry. So uh, the excretion of uh, feces and urine is together. That's why we call it excreta. So the amount of excreta times gross energy of excreta, or JEE, divided by feed intake. So in this uh, picture, you can see consumed energy through feed minus excreted energy through excreta. So this will give us the apparent metabolizable energy. But in fact, the excreta has the undigested feed plus the endogenous source of energy or of nitrogen. Because all of the energy in the excreta actually is not derived from the feed. Some part is derived from the endogenous sources. For example, epithel intestinal epithelial cells, or let's say mucin, or secretion of oil acids, or uh, digestive juice. So that's why we need to uh, account for that part. In fact, if we don't account for that part, uh, we are underestimating the uh, metabolizable energy of the feed. So if we account for that part, we will have true metabolizable energy. So in order to do that, actually we need to use this formula. TME looks similar to the AME formula, but we have an additional part here, which is uh, E prime times JEE -E prime. Then I put prime here. It means that this part is related to the fasted group because to measure the endogenous part, we need to have a fasted group or let's say hungry group because we do not feed that group. And all the excreta they are uh, excreting is derived from the endogenous uh, source. That's why that part is the endogenous energy. 
So to do this bioassay, actually we need to have two groups, fasted group and fed group. So actually Sibald uh, developed this idea and uh, in this formula you can see feeding cake of the fed group times gross energy of feed minus excreta from fed group times gross energy of their excreta plus the excreta of fasted group times gross energy of the uh, excreta from fasted group divided by feed intake. So it will give us true metabolizable energy. So in fact, TME accounts for the endogenous energy. And we can see it would be a better criteria than the AME. So what about AMEN and TMEN? Apparent metabolizable energy corrected for nitrogen retention. Why we should, why do we need to, you know, correct for nitrogen retention? I have summarized the concept here. Look here, we have feed energy. When we are putting actually feed sample inside the calorimetric bomb, what's gonna burn? Carbohydrate, fat, and protein, right? I mean, the nutrients of that feed. And the calorimetric bomb will show us the energy from burning of these ingredients or these nutrients, let's say. And again, when we put excreta sample inside the calorimetric bomb, what ingredients or what nutrients are going to burn? Undigested carbohydrate from the feed, undigested fat, and undigested protein, right? So if we look at the digestion and metabolization of nutrients, we can see for carbohydrates and the fats, actually some part has been digested and absorbed. And the remaining part in the excreta is undigested part. But for protein, the story is a little bit different. For the protein, yes, some part has been digested and absorbed, but other part has been retained in the body, let's say as a, a feather protein or muscle protein, or let's say if you are talking about hens, egg protein. So, and the undigested protein has been excreted. The idea is that when you are burning the feed, inside the calorimetric bomb to get the feed energy, you are burning all of the protein of the feed, but some part will not be used for energy. And that part actually will be remained or retained in the body. We need to correct for that part. We need to account for that part. That's why we say it is corrected for nitrogen retention. So in fact, accounting for uh, retained nitrogen is accounting for the overestimated part of feed energy. And it is really important to understand this concept. So another assumption 
for zero nitrogen correction is related to the uric acid. As you know, oxidation of protein retained as body tissue will yield uric acid that has a gross energy per gram of nitrogen. And usually uh, we can use two values. The first value is gross energy of uric acid, which is 0 0.034 megajoule per kilogram, or 8.12 kilocalorie per kilogram. And the second value is gross energy of in nitrogen containing compounds found in chicken urine. And as you can see, the value for this one is a little bit higher than uric acid. So in fact, we are accounting for this part because as a result of protein turnover, some part of uh, retained protein will be metabolized and will create uric acid which will be excreted through the excreta, right? And we need to account for that part. That's why we can use these values to account for that part. So here you can see the idea of uh, correcting for nitrogen. The final formula for AMEN will be feed intake times gross energy of feed minus the amount of excreta times gross energy of excreta minus NR, which is nitrogen retention, times, the, uh, times K. K actually is the energy per gram of nitrogen. So, in the previous slide, we said, you know, the, uh, this energy would be around 8.12 kilocalorie per kilogram for the uric acid. But for other nitrogen containing compounds, it was a little bit uh, higher. If we take an approximate uh, average, we can use this value as 8.22 kilocalorie per kilogram. And to obtain nitrogen retention, it is simple. Uh, you need to say consumed nitrogen minus excreted nitrogen, which is uh, retained nitrogen or nitrogen retention. So if you uh, pay attention, you can see we are accounting for an overestimation that we made previously on this part, on the uh, feed energy part. That's why we need to subtract it from the uh, formula. That's why we are using minus. So for the TMEN, it is the same idea. The only difference is that, as you know, for the TME, for the true metabolizable energy, we are using two groups, fasted group and um, fed group. So that's why we do have two parts. The first part is similar to AMEN. This part, it is actually for fed group, but the second part, it is for a uh, fasted group or hungry birds. And as you can see, we do have E prime times gross energy of E prime or, you know, excreta from a uh, fasted group plus nitrogen retention of fasted group times K. So, here there is a question. In AMEN formula, we said 
we need to take away the energy of uh, retained nitrogen. And we did that. We said minus nitrogen retention times K. But here, if we pay attention, we are saying plus nitrogen retention of fasted group times K. Why? What's the uh, reason for this? So, in fact, if you pay close attention, we are not adding it up. We are subtracting it. But because nitrogen retention in fasted group is negative, it means that they have not consumed any feed, but they are excreting some endogenous nitrogen. So if you use nitrogen retention equals consumed, in a, consumed nitrogen minus excreted nitrogen for the consumed nitrogen, you have nothing. You need to put zero minus excreted nitrogen, right? So the value for the nitrogen retention will be a negative value. So that's why if you put negative nitrogen retention, this negative sign with the negative sign before that will turn to positive sign. But it's up to you. If you are going to put negative nitrogen retention, you can use the uh, formula below. Or if you are just putting the absolute number of the excrete or of the uh, retained nitrogen from fasted group, in that case, you can use this formula. So I have explained AME, TME, AMEN, and TMEN in poultry nutrition. But if you happen to hear just metabolizable energy, for example, in an article or let's say lecture, webinars, conferences, if somebody says, okay, metabolizable energy of this feed is this amount. So in that case, usually they are referring to AMEN or apparent metabolizable energy corrected for nitrogen. If they don't specify which of those four energy they are talking about, usually ME or metabolizable energy is referring to AMEN. I hope you enjoyed this episode and please let me know if you have any questions down there in the comment and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.